the 2020s might be called the golden time for environmental tech startups around the world, with more people sharing their concerns over climate change and related issues. Young workers see the importance of the environmental crisis and want to be part of the solution. And those people are literally leaving their jobs uh, at Google to work on climate tech solutions because they believe climate change is the biggest problem of our time but also the biggest opportunity uh, because every problem needs a solution and a solution usually pay for it. So actually the World Bank is estimating that to be a two trillion dollar economy by 2025 which is tomorrow. So you can imagine how many jobs are going to be created in that industry. John Zen, he sees the biggest growth opportunity for employment approaching 2025 in the sustainability and climate industry. And that's why he believes that the future of work is green. There are an estimated 1,000 startups in Thailand, whereas our neighboring country, Vietnam, has 3,800. John Z, the Vietnamese government, has been cultivating talent, while the US has been outsourcing a lot of engineering work to Vietnam for 20 years. So there's that culture of engineering that is pretty strong there. One thing that's not that strong compared to Thais, though, is creativity. And I've seen that in many cases. Thais are extremely good at designing, creating, things that are really incredible. Being in the movie industry, every movie you, from Hollywood, you can see the Thai names at the end. These are the creative teams. And also for my industry, which is technology, front-end design, UI design, Thais are the best to me. According to a survey by the Thai Startup Trade Association, their members' every turnover was 11.5 million baht in 2021, growing from less than 7.5 million baht just a year before. Each year, around 53.1% of the association's members generate revenue of less than 10 million baht. Most startups admit that they are facing financial problems. But another factor came in is the access to funding. And I think, unfortunately, um, in Thailand, it's very hard for Thai entrepreneurs to have access to funding when they begin their business because um, the banks are not really understanding what technology opportunities are just yet. Um, and access to money uh, at a very young age for a company is very difficult. And this is for that reason that unfortunately Thailand have a lot less startups. In John's view, Thailand has what it takes to be the one of the largest agricultural technology countries. The country just has to realize its own strength. And I'm hoping Thailand will leverage its strength to now see further into that next opportunity, which is not Web2 or Web3, but which is actual hardware, and specifically in agriculture. I think Thailand have all the cards in hand to be one of the largest agricultural technology country in the region, and be able to feed not only Southeast Asia, but the world. I think that's one of the industry that Thailand have strength and we can start to see some of the largest conglomerates in Thailand looking at that. Enabling startups from agriculture, tech, food tech uh, to be really starting to emerge. And that's where I really see the opportunity for Thailand in tech for the next few years. For Thailand to change from being a technology consumer to a producer and be able to export world-class technology, support from the government is crucial. On top of that, businesses may need to think outside the box while being concerned about social and environmental impacts as these are future trends. Zero Power Bunyotak, reporting for Thai PBS World.